Oh, well, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome in. Welcome in. Mia, well, wrong side. Mia also said, welcome in. She's taking a little nap. Um, but if you're into dogs and you're into true crime, you found the perfect spot. That's what we like to do around here. Hang out with dogs and talk a little true crime. If you can hear her breathing or sleeping in the background, just let me know and I'll, I'll tell her to get up. I'll wake her up a little bit. But she just, she looks really cute today. So we are going to be covering Idaho 4 tonight. Um, but before we get started, I'm going to say hello to the chat. So if you're on replay, just, you know, fast forward through this part if you don't want to listen. Um, and I won't, I won't be too long, I promise. Um, but if you guys are here in the live chat or if you're watching on replay, try to hit the like button if you guys don't mind. It does help us get out into the algorithm. The sooner the better. But if you want to wait for some content, I totally understand. Also, did I introduce myself? I'm Tanya. I don't know if I did or not. <laughs> Most nights I forget. Most nights I do forget. So welcome in. Hey, Mary Beth, did you get my email? Hey, Jan. Hey, Leisha. Hey, Debug. I saw that uh, Leisha had a... Hey, DM. I saw she had a milestone. Hey, Kat K. Welcome in, everybody. I'm just going to kind of go through the names a little bit here. Serious. Welcome in. Therese. Hey, Aries. I saw you there as I was going down. <laughs> I was trying to find, there it is. I was trying to find the, thank you. Hey, Mr. Rosebud. Hello, Alicia. How are you doing? Remember for 11 months. Wow. One more month and you're going to have that different arm. It's not too much different, but it is a little different. Hey, West Virginia Holly Girl. Welcome in, everybody. Hey, Trixie. Hey, Pancakes. That's a good milestone. Heck yeah. 11 months. I hope you'll be here for many, many more years. You better be. I'll come looking for you. I did that last time. <laughs> I said, I did that last time. Um, I wasn't even sharing the page that I wanted to share with you guys. I don't know why that page was up there, but probably because my brain isn't working right today. Um, your girl thought it was Friday all day. I did it on the community tab. I think I need a vacation or a break. <laughs> I don't know. I put the wrong person on the post yesterday on the community tab. I mixed up the victims. I did not mean to. I was just typing in my my brain got away, I guess, from me. And then today I said, happy Friday or something, you know, like everybody got through Friday and I was like sitting here and it took me a minute. Then it was like, no, it's Thursday. I even had an appointment today that I knew I had to be at two o'clock. I was there, but I thought it was Friday. Really? Grizzly did too? I'm not the only one. Linda, that, that's, I've heard it from a few different people. My counselor even said all day, I thought it was Friday. Okay. I don't feel too bad then. Cause I'm like, am I losing my, my crap here? Cause I mean, it could, <laughs> could be. Could, could be, could be, but I wanted to, um, <coughs> go over a little bit with Idaho for tonight. We haven't really talked about it in a little while, um, on the channel because it's not as we're not getting in as many, you know, um, updates as we were. And I guess there's not a whole lot more to speculate, to throw out there, <laughs> um, that hasn't been put out there yet. Cause I mean, literally everybody's come out with their own theory on this case. But we've really done well with sticking to the PCA and what we've heard, you know, what we can hear through, you know, pretty good resources. And we stick with just the facts. We try to. But, you know, shoot. Mary Beth even thought it was Friday. I did, too. I was like, I'm going to take their package to the post office and get it out there for the weekend. I was like, my brain was on off today. But I do still have my original um, PCA. I can't believe it's still holding up. It has been through the ringer. So if we have any questions, if you have any questions over it. Let me know. I do have it out and I can look right at it. So like I said, and I'll say probably four more times before we get started. Welcome in everybody. <laughs> I feel like I say that a lot. It's my thing. It's my thing. Welcome in. Okay. So um, I am going to throw the link to my second channel in here because, you know, that's what as creators, we do that. <laughs> so if you'd like to join over there, subscribe, we'd love to have you. And your girl's got some stuff to talk about. So I really want to. Media body suits good. Okay. I think Mary Beth, it'll work really well because I think that when I had gotten a small, it was a little too small. So I think the medium will fit you good. Egg guard. That's what you named your egg, Ashley. Egg guard. <laughs> My bantam rooster, a new chicken coop that me and Boo can go inside of and sit with him. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, good for your chicken. You had a nice, I mean, I bet that chicken's living pretty well. My brother has chickens. He lives downtown. Um, Like he lives downtown, downtown. I'm so Columbus, but he doesn't live in Columbus. He works at Columbus, but 
and it's not a big town. And they have a rooster across the street. Every morning. It's like four in the morning. I told Vincent, I was like, we're not staying here. Because one day we were, we were one night we were there. I'm like, we're not staying here. That rooster is not waking me up tomorrow. <laughs> I think we ended up staying there though, right before the rooster we left. <laughs> so thank you guys all for being here. I do appreciate it so much. Actually, Mary Beth, I have your stuff it's right in front of me, I think. Because I had it all nice and folded. Um, so I wanted to go over the alibi defense again, you know, um, kind of the progression of how we got here with the alibi defense, because it's taken some time to get to where we're at right now. Um, and is it me or does the defense, is the defense, it's getting kind of worse, but at the same time, I think I know where Anne's going with, going with, like, I know, I think I know where she's going. So just listen to my madness tonight because it's kind of going to be a little bit of madness, but Jan sent me the new document yesterday and I usually be like, thanks Jan. And you know, none the wiser, you know, I just read it, but I like wrote her right back and I was like, I'm only through the first sentence, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then second sentence, I was like, blah, blah, blah. blah. So then I was like, I better leave Jan alone. I'm what she's, I'm, I'm be yelling in her ear about this document because it's that, it's that crazy. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> Uh, I mean, you, he's walking, he's running, he's driving, he's gazing. What isn't he? He's doing all the things, you know, he's doing all the things. Full grown and two pounds. all oh, poor little baby, baby, little baby, uh, chicken. <laughs> he's probably happy. Lives on a good life. So I, as I was looking through the old alibi defense, I found this and this was, um, let me double check the date. So this is the notice of defendant's response to state's alibi demand. So basically, Bill Thompson and the state, they were demanding that Brian Kohlberger, if he's going to go with like the um, alibi defense, that he needs to produce the alibi. Um, and so, and, you know, writes out this document. Um, and I'll read a little, I'll read through it a little bit. But um, the ending is what, I don't know. I was like, what? <laughs> So I figured I'd ask you guys because some of this stuff is like old. I mean, we went through these like um, forever ago, but I feel like sometimes with the documents, we read through them so fast and we don't absorb it because like as I'm reading back through this, I was like, wait a minute. Huh? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Hey, Melanie. So it's pretty exciting stuff. You know, I was actually excited to come on and like talk to you about Idaho again. You know what I mean? So I was like, hmm, this is weird. This is weird. You know, when your brain's thinking, you know, like that's what um, makes, I feel like, um, cases stay relevant because if your brain is not, you know, working, doesn't want to produce the content, then the, the case dies out. So I'm glad that there's some new stuff coming out. That's helping us reevaluate the case. Um, but it says that this is actually from, let me see when it's from the 24th of July. And oh my gosh, hold on one second. Let me see if my, I'm so sorry. Give me just like one second. I think my dog wants in, my other dog. All right. I got her. She may uh, give me, she may just be sitting under me for a minute. She's, she's scared. She comes under the desk. I'm so sorry. But you know, when you're a dog mom, it's like being a, a regular mom. You wouldn't leave your kid out the, the outside the door, would you? They're knocking. She was doing this with her paws. So it would have been annoying. But um, this is the, like I said, the response to the demand for alibi. And it says, Mr. Kohlberger notes that Idaho code gives the code preserves his constitutional right to silence as well to testify on his own behalf. Mr. Kohlberger stands firm on his constitutional right as well as the statutory recognition of that right. Noteworthy is that an alibi indicates a line of proof by which the defend defendant attempts to show that he could not have been have not committed the crime of which he is accused of because he was elsewhere at the time. So, you know, the whole time she was going to say, he, he, like, uh, obviously, she wasn't going to place him in that house. That would just be dumb. So we kind of knew from the get-go that she was going to, you know, create a defense or an alibi that was outside of the house um, because that's where his DNA is. So um, 
it says here that a defendant's denial of the charges against him does not constitute an alibi, but as soon as he offers evidence that he was at some other place other than where the crime of which he is charged with was committed, he is raising the alibi defense. So if he wants to say that he wasn't there, he has to produce some sort of alibi. I think that's the state of Idaho. That's just part of their legal defense, like their legal thing. I don't think that's every state. Like, I don't think that's Ohio. I have to double check on that, though. So Kohlberger's defense team continues investigating and preparing his defense. And then this is the part that I was like, what? Okay, so it says evidence corroborating Mr. Kohlberger being at a location other than the King Road address will be disclosed pursuant to discovery and evidentiary rules as well as statutory requirements. This is the part that I was confused about. It is anticipated this evidence may be offered by way of cross-examination of witnesses produced by the state as well as calling expert witnesses. Is he trying to, like, is she trying to insinuate that, like, Bill would have to call Dylan to testify? Because what better evidence would the state have other than Dylan physically seeing him, like an eyewitness? To me, it's almost like she didn't get that preliminary hearing and she be she's still sulking at this point over it. She's still upset, you know. Welcome in, everyone. I see everybody coming in. Hey, Math. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Lenora. Better than being a regular mom. <laughs> It's pretty exciting. It is. It's exciting stuff. My dogs are, they keep me on my toes. So I'm wondering if that's, I, I don't know. I'm just, just wondering why it says it is anticipated this evidence may be offered by way of cross examination of witnesses produced by the state. Like, yeah, we're going to cross examine your witnesses and we're going to get our alibi through that, cooperate our alibi through that. How, how did they even know? who the state would call, it, they would have to know a certain person, I feel like. To me, it just sounded like, you know, um, th that them like trying to get like it in writing that, um, I don't know, just I feel like it's a way to like a, a bullying tactic almost. What the heck do they want out now? What do they want? Oh, my Lordy. What do you guys want? <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm not even going to turn off the mic. I'm going to let you guys out. You guys go out with your dad. Come on. One of you. One. You two. Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. Two. See ya. You staying? Okay. Be good. Sorry about that. I got one down, one in here. So, okay. Let's start, let's start reading this again. Um, she'll be good. She's going right into her bed right now. So, she likes to hang out in here with me now. So, um, I, I don't know. I was just maybe thinking that because she, she did get a little pissy after she didn't get her preliminary hearing, you know, I mean, she did. <laughs> so I'm thinking that maybe she was hoping that this would go, you know, in, in front of the judge and then she would be able to cross examine whatever witnesses that she would need to. And then she could put on her own states or her own, I'm sorry, um, defense expert witness. In which that's where we're at now. I mean, if you see with the new paperwork, they do have an expert um, cross-examine or someone to cross-examine them as a witness, like as an expert. Couldn't get that out. Stay tuned for more alibis. Yes. I'm wondering how many he's going to give us. I hope he gives us more. I love the stars trees <laughs> in the chat. I think I'm going to start calling him Kohlberg. I think I'm going to start calling every criminal that had like every criminal, I'm just gonna start calling them by a different name. So then this took me, this one took me forever. I could not find the alibi defense when it says he's driving around. It took me like three hours to find this stupid thing. I don't know why I didn't blow that up more for you guys. Sorry. Um, you know, you guys can see a little better than me, but shoot, that was really small. Ashley said, do you really think he would have sat in jail all this time if they had evidence to prove he was elsewhere? Nope, I sure don't. But I know, I think I know where Ann's going with this. Whenever I saw the latest filing, I was like, oh, okay, I see you, Ann. I see. I don't see anybody right now, actually. <laughs> lay on your bed, Raya. Come on, lay on your bed. Can't see nobody. I'll be sorry. Um, I'll go ahead and start reading, though. There she goes. She's getting in her bed, I think, now. 
Sorry, I usually don't have, you usually don't hear little puppy paws, but tonight you have to hear them. Sorry. Um, so this is whenever Ann came out with the actual alibi defense for the first time, like her actual the alibi of him driving around. So um, we'll read through this and then I highlighted some like key portions. So, you know, we won't read the top because that's just them coming in here by, you know, Here's Brian Kohlberger buying through his attorney on record. We all know that. We all know the first of every legal document that they come out with. Um, if you guys are new to the channel or if you're not and you just don't know this, I do put the um, defendants, all of the, his um, paperwork is going to be like highlighted in blue and then pink for the um, state and then yellow if it's just a court document. I need to get that like somewhere like a logo, kind of where my logo is and put that there. That way you guys will know because if you ever come in, you'll know if we're talking about the defense or the prosecution or just like, you know, um, something from the court. So it says, um, Idaho code and ICR 12.1 12, 12, um, require an alibi disclosure of a specific location with a specific location and witnesses to, um, to so testify by statutory definition. Mr. Kohlberger may remain silent yet testify that he was not at the one, one King road, on November 13th, 2022. However, in abundance of caution and rec recognizing the court has authority to exclude witnesses, Mr. Kohlberger has indicated he anticipates cooperating witnesses. Like, and whenever it says like the court has authority to exclude, I, I feel like she puts these little jabs in there, you know, like saying they might not, they might just, um, they might have them, but they might not bring them because it's going to be, it'll hurt their case. Like, I think the bill would bring anybody, no matter what, you know? <laughs> English is English from school, from 35 years ago. My my English is broken. Do you think, no, I think it's even worse, Mary Beth, for him, because now he's actually putting in details, you know? I mean, he wasn't even supposed to be there. Their, their, their hours are dust till dawn, bud. He was, in, he was out there in the dead of night. What you doing in the park at dead at night with water all around that you could fall into? Come on now, stargazing my ass. Now, when was the last when was the last time any woman, anybody, has been stargazing? I, I was probably between the ages of eighteen and twenty-two, and I probably was with a little boy, like you know what I mean, not a little boy, but like someone my age, you know what I mean, like eighteen to twenty-two. I just I don't see that being a twenty-eight-year-old thing. Like you're just chilling. 28 years old, like, I think I'm gonna go look at the stars. But we, but we're gonna hear right here. This is why I wanted to go back because I wanted to go back to this document, right? Because she doesn't say in this document anything about stargazing, right? She doesn't say nothing about it. But if she knew about this from the get go, you know what I mean? From the jump, she should know everything from the jump. She shouldn't be finding out stuff a year and a half later. Do you know what I mean? So she knew she should have put it in there. He likes to drive and go to this trail, wah, 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 or whatever it's called. I can't pronounce it. And, you know, like she didn't put any of that right here. No stargazing, no walk in the trails, no, you know, what trail he liked to go on because she's getting smarter. That's why. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But um, this was his, you know, alibi defense that we just grew to, to know and love. The only thing about him. Mr. Kohlberger has long, has long had a habit of going for drives alone. Now, like, um, that's not really a habit if it's just like you doing it, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, people would have to call that a habit, right, to be a habit. That could just be like your normal, normalcy. I don't know. He's the only one that says he has a habit. Often he would go for drives at night. He did so late on November 12th. So that means before midnight on the 12th and into November 13th. Long ass drive. Mr. Kohlberger is not claiming to be a specific location at a specific time. At this time, there is not a specific witness to say precisely where Mr. Kohlberger was at each moment of the hours between late night November 12th, 22, and early morning November 13th, 2022. He was out driving during the late night and early morning hours of November 12th through the 13th of 2022. He must have a bladder of a, I don't even know what. Who has a big bladder? I don't even know. Bladder of a whale. 
counsel for Mr. Um, counsel for Mr. Kohlberger. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read that because I, I don't need to. Um, it's not really important, but cooperation of Mr. Or Brian Kohlberger not being at 1122 King may be brought out through cross examination of state's witnesses. There it is again. Like the only state witness that I know of is Dylan. You know what I mean? That's a state's witness. Like, I'm sure they have experts. They probably have witnesses of, like, people that he went to school with and stuff. But, like, I mean, who's the one person that Anne would want to talk to the most? In my opinion, my humble opinion, Dylan Mortensen. Or maybe Bethany Funk. I don't know. But um, it does say this. So I thought it was kind of funny. The state chose a secret grand jury rather than the planned preliminary hearing. Had the state moved forward with the preliminary hearing, the defense would have had the opportunity to develop testimony through cross-examination and witness presentation. She didn't like that. Um, cooperation of Brian Kohlberger not being at 1122 may be brought out through um, no, expert witness presentation. That analysis is underway. So I wonder if that's the same expert she's going to use. That's who she's been, you know, um, saying that she's been, she says that brought out through expert witness, um, you know, presentation and that analysis is underway. So this was back in August. So when she, when we go to court next time and she's supposed to produce her little star witness or whatever, if, you know, if it's before trial, remember this, remember this. Um, you know, cause she's saying right here that her expert and her are already underway with getting stuff. And I have a feeling she'll be like, I need a continuance. Why do you need a continuance? If you've been working on this since August, you know, that's what I'm, I'm going to plant that little seed in my head and remember that. <laughs> hey, hey, Westy's alone. Yeah. Um, that PCA says a lot. It sure does. I, we could always read that too. She really is um, like kind of stomping her feet. And now she's given us an even better one. I mean, even better. I don't think you can get any better. And I read that there. Did I think? Okay. Mr. Kohlberger without driving alone. Cooperating evidence may come from cross-examination of state witnesses. Cooperating evidence may come, up, come from presentation of defense experts. Not anything that Ann's saying. <laughs> Mr. Kohlberger is aware and will comply with his continuing duty to disclose information. The court may exempt Mr. Kohlberger from further inquiry. Mr. Kohlberger requests, requests such an exemption at this time. You're not getting exempt. Come on now. Come on now. What do you, come on. In support of exemption, Mr. Kohlberger is prepared to provide further detail in an ex parte hearing with the court. I can't believe I, like, I missed over this. So one party, meaning her and Brian and the judge, she said, we'll give you further detail, but uh, not unless you exempt him from the alibi defense. Absolutely not. There are four dead college kids. Absolutely not. No. It's not. It's not weak. Um, I always hate having to do this. Okay, we'll put that up and then I'll come back to that. That way we have it at least, you know, up. Um, and let me get... Okay. Accept all cookies. Okay. And I'll read over that in a minute for you. So then we come to today, or not today, I'm sorry. Day before, I think it was day before yesterday, wasn't it? Or yesterday? Let's see. Before I flip over there. The 17th, yesterday. Like I said, my days are running running together. <laughs> um, but this is the notice of defendant's supplemental response to state's alibi demand. Comes now, Brian, you know, through Ann. Mr. Kohlberg, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to go over it. Okay, so that way you guys can absorb it all. And then I'm going to pick over the parts I think have a, an answer or what I think Ann's doing. 
And let me know if you've heard about these on any other channel, because I haven't watched anybody. So um, let me know. Mr. Kohlberger moved to Pullman, Washington in June of 2022. As an avid runner and hiker, I never knew he was a hiker until now. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to read it all through. <laughs> Sorry. As an avid runner and hiker, he explored many areas of the Palrus of the Palrus. Of note, he explored Wawawa Wai Park. I don't know how to say that. Where's say Wawa Park? In July of 2022, and this became a favorite location. After the school year began, Mr. Kohlberger was busy with classes and work at Washington State University, and his running and hiking decreased, but did not stop. Instead, his nighttime drives increased. This is supported by data from Mr. Kohlberger's phone showing him in the countryside late at night and or in the morning hours on several occasions. The phone data includes numerous photographs taken on several different late evenings and early mornings, including in November depicting the night sky. Mr. Kohlberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022, as he often did to hike and run and or see the moon and stars. He drove throughout the area of south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawa Park. Additional information as to Mr. Kohlberger's whereabouts as the early morning hours progressed, including additional analysis by Mr. Ray, will be provided once the state provides dis discovery requested and now subject to an upcoming motion to compel. If not disclosed, Mr. Ray's testimony will also reveal that critical exculpatory evidence, further corroborating Mr. Kohlberger's alibi, was either not preserved or or what, or has been withheld. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, now I'm going to go through it. <clears throat> I had to grab my drink, sorry. There's a lot to go through there. But I think I know where she's going with this. And I see you, Anne. I see you. And touche, touche, Anne. She's going to work these interviews to her... She's trying to, she's going to try to use the interviews to her behalf. I don't know. It's going to work. I feel like a little bit, but maybe it won't, maybe it won't, but I don't think it's going to work getting them off. I just think it's going to maybe work placing them there. Like, but not at that time, not that time. So, um, it says here, Mr. Colberger moved to Pullman, Washington in June of 2022 as an avid runner and hiker. He explored many areas of the Palouse. So we've never heard that he was a hiker. We heard that he took night jogs with a buddy from like the area. Um, of note, he explored Wawa Wa Park in July of 2022, and this became a favorite location. Okay, so hear me out. Wow, I didn't even realize the date. Okay, so that summer, and somebody let me know when this was because I don't know. Let me know when that pool party was. Where Brian was at. If anyone can let me know that, that'd be great. But do you guys remember Brian Kohlberger? He went to that pool party with, I'll tell you his name, the Mark Martinez guy, um, Chris, Christian Martinez. Let me see if there's a picture of him just like pulling this article. Of course, there's not. Let me, um, let me see if I can pull one up. I mean, if not, I have one, but um, sorry, guys, this is like all half-assed backwards here. Um, it has like a popular name, like, you know, but I wanted to get you like a picture so you can kind of see what he looks like. Okay, there he is. This guy. And then there's another guy, but this the guy is the guy that you're going to remember. This guy here. So do you remember this guy here and Brian Kohlberger? They met, the reason why they met was this guy's the neighbor. And Brian Kohlberger's dad saw him in the hallway, called him off guard, was like, hey, hey, big dream. Was like, hey there, you know, um, I see you. Will you be friends with my son? Not really like that, but, you know, he's like, hey, my son has a problem with making friends you know, maybe you can help him out, um, and be like his friend or something, which in a way I kind of think that's sweet of his dad, you know, um, 
if I was like introvert or something, I would hope that maybe someone would step in and help me, you know, in that aspect. But that's only, you know, just saying. But this is um, the guy I was telling you about. So do you remember when he went to the pool party, there was a second gentleman that came out and he was like Hawaiian and we we're like, oh, he's so cute. I, I don't know if I can find a picture of him. Um, if I put in like pool party because he came up like I have a picture of him, but or a video of him, but I don't think I have a picture. Okay. So the other guy is um, who I want to talk about. And I know I'm not going to say his name right. Basif Salam, Salam John is his name. And I'm going to put his name in the chat. <laughs> that way you guys can see what it like, what it looks like on paper. I mean, like, you know, but you, you probably won't remember him. So basically, I'm going to give you the background story. This guy and Brian Kohlberg went to a pool party together. They run into one of his friends, not Brian's, this other guy. Um, and he says, you know, like he talks to Brian a little bit at the party. Everyone's kind of like, he got these two girls, his number. We couldn't believe it. And then the DJ was like, yeah, but he was a little bit too close to me for comfort. And I told him I had to like get back to what I was doing. Cause he was kind of disrupting me. But in one aspect, I mean, he's like a little ladies man, other aspect, the guys didn't really prefer him. So take with that with what you will. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's the same Selma John, Selma, Selma John, Selma John. I can't say it, but I love your name and you're very, very adorable. Um, thank you, Jan. Let me know. Do I need to read it now? But I can't let me know. Um, so basically the trail that they were on that, that he likes to go on all of a sudden, Brian Colbert, the wah, wah, wah trail. The Salam John guy said a month after this pool party happened, that he was on a trail. He said, he didn't tell you the trail name. He just said in an interview, I was on a trail and I saw Brian Kohlberger that day. And um, I only said hi to him at that party. And he came up to me and was like, hey, how are you? And like wanted to be my friend kind of. And he's like, I was kind of weirded out by the guy because I'd only met him once before. So my brain is thinking like this. What if the trail that Salem John was on that when he saw Brian Kohlberger that day was that wah, 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 e trail. And then that would place Brian Koberger there prior to the unalivings. You know what I mean? And it would give him a witness that saw him on that stupid trail, which he was probably only on that one time. Does that make sense? So basically the guy that he met at a pool party, he sees them like a month later and he's on a trail. They don't say the trail name. And then he says, um, Brian came up to him and he just thought it was kind of weird. Like, you know, he had only seen him one time, only met him once or whatever, you know? And like, I don't know, I guess guys are weird out by that. I thought it was kind of like, maybe you just wanted a friend. I don't know. But I think that's where, I think that's where, um, Miss Anne's going with this. And I did look him up on actual socials and stuff because I was curious. And he has, um, him and the guy that I just showed you a picture of on his, um, YouTube. Let me put it on here. So he shaved his head a month ago and then he hadn't posted for like seven months. I watched one of these and it was pretty, this one. Um, it's like a ride, ride along. I don't know. He takes y'all around with him and it has that guy in it. So I'm going to play a little bit of it. Let me see there. That's the guy, right? Fuck. Did you have to make an appointment for your I called. So we never seen these guys actually together. They did interviews like separate from each other. So it, it was kind of interesting seeing them again. And let me put um, the link to his channel in here real quick. I just thought, hey, I'm going to look him up on YouTube. I was like, he looks like more like a YouTuber because, but I mean, he's not really on YouTube because he was on Facebook. Like this is the picture I saw him on Facebook. And I was like, oh, he like, you know, he must be um on like tw youtube or something because i thought you know he likes to do podcasts but i guess he's really not on there but he shaved his head um i think what was the video we're watching so we'll actually we'll watch this one because this has his friend in it 
but we would be there like special forces like so they were pretty elite guys. And then I'll like, try to show you a picture. We got to go out for a week and they showed us how to like survive in the wild. How to cut bamboo, how to start fires with bamboo, like in a wow. knife. At the end of like their their training. They have this tradition where they had us all like get in this big ass circle. And like the, the head honcho comes in with like the stick that he just like peeled off a tree. And he has like a cobra. A live cobra, bro. In his other hand, he tosses this bitch in the middle of this big ass surf. Thing is like it's it's like reared up, you know, like ready to just like attack, slithering to the wall of people that we made. This guy has a stick and he just like like a kung fu master, bro, just ding, snatches it to the ground. They do that, they kind of play with the snake for a little bit, you know. They then the guy he takes the snake, he ties the head to a tree that's still alive, and it's kind of fucked up, but it was kind of cool at the same time. They cut around the snake's head and they peel the skin off like it's a sock. Really and they take this like machete, cut this head off, and then but I won't let you guys I won't make you listen to the whole thing because it's like kind of graphic because it's like war stuff or whatever. But um, so this was the guy that was friend not friends, but neighbors with Brian Koberger. And this is a different guy's um, YouTube that we're on. So the this guy is the... I don't, I don't know what ethnicity he is. He's just adorable. He's the guy that they he met Brian at the pool party that later saw Brian on the trails. Um, Bastiff Salam John. I think that's how you say his name. I'm like trying really hard with that name. <laughs> um, and welcome in. And so, um, yeah, I don't... I don't know what they were talking about there. I would have just listened to like barely any of it. And I was like, Ew, he's talking about some crazy stuff. Um, but he does do really good editing on his videos. I was really surprised. Like for him only having like seven subscribers, like wh what? Because I mean, I think his, I think his editing is pretty good. Um, I think this shows a picture of him. So here. Maybe this will refresh your memory of like who this guy is. Yeah, crying. Got a pink toothbrush. Editing screws are pretty good, though. I don't think this is copyrighted music. I don't think. I was trying to get a picture of him. There is, there is a picture of him. That guy. So, because he did like an interview, I think, with Nancy, and then he did an interview maybe with just Fox or something. No, thrive off grid. I'm weird. And I've never I've never harmed anybody. You know. I don't I don't think that he even looks that weird. Well, actually, I don't even think he really is that weird. I mean, I'm not I don't think that some of the stuff he does is weird. I think putting track I don't think that touching trash with gloves is weird right there. I don't think that's weird. But what I find weird is putting it into small Ziploc baggies. Nobody's going to do that. Someone tried to tell me one time it was because they're recycling. If you have OCD and you're you're not going to touch trash, even with gloves, you're just not going to do that. And it's called recycling bins. Someone tried to say that they had to put their stuff in little baggies like that. They're, I said, so a whole can, you just put it in a whole, like a baggie, like an aluminum can. No, there, someone was trying to put one over me and I'm like, I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> And his, his parents lived in Pennsylvania. So this is the guy. I just wanted to give you guys a little, like, a picture of him. Because I think that's who, that's what's going to happen. I think that Anne is going to use that in her, um, and showing that Brian Koberger may have been at that trail before. Prior to this, um, you know, prior to everything going down. Because I think that they met, I want to say June or July that, of that year. That some, He came in, what, in June? So maybe it was July that that party was in. Did anyone? I didn't see anybody put their um, put the date in there. Oh, okay, thanks, Jan. I didn't see the first one the first time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, twenty eight. I want. I wonder what the sky was like. Do you know what I mean? I wonder if there was if there was even stars to be looked at. Because I know it snowed a couple of days after that. Or like a day after that. Japan has strict rules about disposing of trash. Yeah, Teresa, I, yep, I looked at that. Yeah. I saw that, yeah. It's supposed to be gated anyway. I don't know if they leave. I don't know if they close it. 
But yeah. <laughs> well, let me know if you need any help, Mary Beth. But yeah, I'm so I'm thinking that's what they're doing here. It's just weird. My that's how my brain went, and it's hard to kind of explain it. But I think they're going to try to they're trying to build up credibility. And so they're going to get him to testify. And that guy's going to hate it. <laughs> Cause he's going to be like, I'm going to have to testify that I saw this dude, even though I think he did this. Do you know what I mean? I would just, um, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. If that's what you saw. That's what you saw. Um, but I think that's where they're going. And so it says after the school year began. Oh, okay. Right here. It says, um, of note, he explored Wawa park in July of 2022. And this became a favorite location. After the school year began. So we should see them him there a lot. Um, I wonder if they have cameras. After the school year began, Mr. Kohlberger was busy with classes and work at Washington State University and his running and hiking decreased, but did not stop. That was in, hmm, okay. Instead, his nighttime drives increased. This is supported by data from Mr. Kohlberger's phone showing him in the countryside, which I read that. Um, you know, this says the phone data includes numerous photos taken on several different late evenings and early mornings, including in November, depicting the night sky. Now, where was, are, where, are we really sure? Are we really sure that, you know, I saw that on the, uh, it was 28 degrees, but I didn't see the sky. It looked like it was pretty clear. I thought other than the ice, I saw ice on the other one. Let me see. Yeah, because I knew it was 28 that night. I just didn't know. It says ice fog. I wonder if it would be different in the... Let me tell you where it's at. Why do I have everything so backwards? Um, It is Wawa County Park. And so I, I just don't get... Um, oh, whoops. How did I just... What did I just do? I just took myself out of everything, didn't I? Okay. We're going to go back. <laughs> We're going to go back in time. I'm trying to think. Um, so she is saying that he went from his address to Okay. So she's saying that he went this way. And so it, I don't know. I was just getting a little confused because I'm like, if he went completely the opposite direction, but they have him on camera going the other direction, how is that going to work for the defense? Like, um, cause if you put in the King road residence, it's the opposite direction. So I got to look into that more. Cause I'm just like, what, how is she going to put him all the way over here? When they have them on camera all the way over here. Now that's talking around. Now, now that's driving around and stuff. Yeah. Walking around. Yeah. Instead of him driving around, now he's walking around. Yeah. And he's in a car stargazing with a roof. It has a roof. And you didn't stop the whole time. According to your first alibi, you didn't stop. So when did you see the stars? Did you hang your head, Jim Carrey, out the window? Very weird. They should check the Snake River. That's what I said, Jeremy. I said that a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, we did. This looks like the Snake River. We're looking at it right now. But yeah, we went over that. We went through his whole travels from there and back. We like, I had video visuals and stuff. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, Because I'm a visual person. And so I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, this ain't mathing. This math is not math. So I'm going to look more into that because I'm just really interested in this new document. Um, it says Mr. Kohlberger was out driving in the early morning hours. Now it's changed. Okay. It's changed because in that old document, and we're going to go back. Um, where was it? Is this the first one? No, there it is. Okay. Second one. So on this one, Where's the big one? At? Okay. He did so late on November 12th and into November 13th. Now she's just saying Mr. Kohlberg was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th because you even knew how stupid it sounded to put him in there before November 13th on November 12th. 
you knew that sound and you, you probably thought about it later on. Oh, he couldn't possibly be driving for five and a half hours and can't stop. Why would he be doing that? So my alibi, if I was him, if I was a dumb, and if I, if I was a just a dumb criminal in general, I mean, just, you know, dumb criminals, criminals are usually dumb. I would say, I don't know. I don't know where I was, but I know I wasn't there. That's what I said. Take it or leave it. I don't know. To the day, <laughs> to the day I die, you know, nope, I don't know. Do you know where I was? I don't know. Um, but I really think that that's what he's going to, they're going to try to do. Um, but it says here that as he was often did to hike, run, or see the moon and stars, he drove throughout the area of south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawa Yi Park. Now, I wonder if you can really get up in that park after dark. I wonder if there's any pictures. I'm on the page, but. I didn't get to read this, so let's see here. Um, fire restrictions, don't need to know that. Park amenities, half a mile. Oh, yeah, and, this, and the park is really small. It's only like 24 minutes to get around the whole park. It's like 0.9 miles or something. So it's like you drove a half hour away to walk around a park that takes you 24 minutes to get around? Walk a couple blocks and come home. You know, don't waste your gas. <laughs> we need that. We need stargazing shirts. <laughs> it says one large group shelter. Okay. And then Wawa Bay, there's a small, there's a, a look off the snake river, small bay. Like there, I mean, you can't really walk around there. I wonder if there's any pictures on this one. Cause um, I'll look at photos. Like it just doesn't look like the place that you would go at three or four in the morning. Just me, just me, but don't know why you would need to be there. Where's the rest of the pictures? You got to be kidding. Because I saw some more, but um, on another page. But yeah, it just doesn't look like the type that, I mean, place it. Oh, that's full size. Well, that looks great. <laughs> I'm like, it, it didn't really have like full size. They only have, oh, they have a couple of different ones. Okay. So they have this one. I just, I mean, how are you going to see the stars with all them trees, sir? I mean, d do you guys see yourself walking or driving 30 minutes to walk around here at any age? Especially 28-year-old single guy? I mean, I don't see it. I just don't see it. I'm going to that lake. Uh, okay. Oh, the one with the sign has a gate. Okay, thank you. I didn't even see it. Oh, yep, there's a gate. Oh, I wonder if the gate's all the way closed or not. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes they'd be closed, but they're not really closed. But this looks closed. I mean, it, unless it's like the smallest little thing and it stops uh, right behind the sign. But we should call and ask them. Hey, Mark, we should call and ask. Do you Do you lock up? Hmm. Do you walk the gates at night? Is there any way for me to trespass in there? Because I'm just curious to know. Don't look up my number. Don't reverse <laughs> reverse search me. I want to know that too. I want to know about cameras. And do you lock the gate? And then wah wah we. I don't know if it's wah wah we or wah 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 in part, but wah 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 wah. Um, it's a lot of walls. So I want to just go over those documents with you guys because I thought that was just kind of interesting. Very interesting. Um, I don't even know what to say about it. You know, um, I could think of a million different things to say that would be better than stargazing. I mean, I really thought the driving around alibi defense was dumb, like not smart to do. Like I was like, that's just crazy. But to add on, Nah, he was out there stargazing. I mean, are we going to hear now next that there was somebody with him? A Brian's girl, Bri Bri's girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I haven't heard that before. 
I was, I haven't. Mm -mm. But when she joined the army, it's all metric system. Yeah. I have a lot of people, friends that were military. Oh, it says closed. It's on the website. Oh, wow. I wonder if there's any other way to get in there. There's only one entrance, one exit. Because you would think that Anne would have checked that out, right? I mean, you she can't pay $200 an hour. If we literally looked at a picture and was like, eh, then she needs to move over. Give us the money. Exactly, Jeremy. Yeah. If he had an alibi this whole time, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I would have just disclosed it. I would have just disclosed whatever it was. Even if it was just something like going to get in a pizza. I don't know. If they put me out of that home, I would disclose it. Um, if it if my DNA was left in that home on a knife sheep, I would be able to explain that. Either, hey, you know, there would be an explanation. Hey, I got it. Um, you know, my I saw it at a knife and gun show and I wanted to check the buckle, the, the you know, the buckle on it. That's probably how it could got on there. Whatever he was going to say, you know, um, I feel like with him not saying anything at all, it just makes it a little bit worse. So, um, yeah, go subscribe to our dude over there. He seems like he's a nice guy. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I just like closed out of all the tabs. I don't think it was anything important. It wasn't. I think I have, I have everything up here. Okay, awesome. I think it was just like my YouTube studio or something. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, while we're talking about um, Idaho 4, let me go over to the Gonzalez Family Tips page. Oh, what's this? An hour ago. Well, looky here. I'm going to give you an update that no one's probably given you. And let me know if anyone else has said anything about the, the trail and the guy from the pool party. If anyone else has, let me know. Cause I just thought that was pretty interesting. No, he was saying he was in the park. They put him in the park. Yeah. Didn't delete that one yet. Don. So let's see. Um, He drove throughout the area of South Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including into Wawa Park. Wawa Park. Whatever park that's called. So it says into. So inside, into, right? But uh, let me know. So, um, News alert! News alert! The Gonzalez family page had put something, so I figured I'd say it like that. Um, I'm going to share it with you guys because it looks like it's something pretty important. Oh, look, let's do this one first. Stargazing? What an absolute joke. Why did we have to wait so long for this story? I'm going to love that. You tell them. Tell them. And it says right here, one day ago, the alibi is due today. Time for accountability. This is not going to be an appearance. It will be given to the court slash judge. Oh, they look like they were like in middle school or high school, maybe they're middle school. I don't know. They look so innocent. Alibis due tomorrow. Okay, so now this is going to be their their statement. And it's so sad. Like, I already know it's going to be sad. Statement from the Gonzalez family. We have been waiting on this information for months and it has finally arrived. It is so hard not knowing anything about the case and you find you have to cling to dates, motions, and hearings in order to figure out anything. A big part of this has been waiting on the alibi information. Now that it is here, we feel even more confident in the prosecution of the defendant. The defense claim is that the defendant was driving late at night, hiking slash running and stargazing. We are not sure why it has taken over a year for this to come out as those don't seem to be complicated activities. We believe that if this alibi had any weight, it would have been submitted months ago. It is also in direct conflict with the probable cause affidavit that states that the defendant's phone was turned off between 247 and 448. So if the defendant was driving around and there is a cell phone in, 
and there is cell phone information that he was in a different place, it would be either before or after the crimes and the murders. Hence, not really an alibi. We continue to look forward to justice in this case and now and can now put this part of the proceedings behind us. Thank you for all your support for our family. Man. I thought someone said complicated case. I was like, no, it's not that complicated. But yeah, wow. You know, I mean, oh, man, they this is only this is what they have like to get their feelings out, you know. And I'm glad that all these people are continuing to support them. I mean, like, if you go down, they'll they'll still be showing things that people but you know send them. Um, like just little things. Like the people will just send them like little pictures that they've never seen. Um, they'll send them you know, um, like little keychains, gifts, things of that nature. Like there's the keychains and stuff. Um, they just, they always have like cute little things or the people will make them like blankets and, um, like pictures and things of that nature. So sorry if I was making you dizzy. I was trying to scroll, um, through here. Oh, I love that picture of Steve and the baby. So we will go over to the Fox nation, um, video I want to show you tomorrow. I'm going to release the one okay so we did if this is a three-part series we watched the first one i put out the first one what we normally do is we'll watch we'll watch them on the live and then i'll put out just the video portion of like the documentary or whatever we watch on um a live for like on saturday so tomorrow it'll be part two this is part three that we're watching tonight and then part three will probably be out on sunday so probably tomorrow and then sunday um i think this is the one okay I'm gonna try to pause it before it goes on because it gets loud. Okay. So um, this is Mark Furman and his people, um, but it's a panel of experts and they just go over the case um, and they're talking on this episode about Brian Kohlberger and life behind bars um, and what can happen during the trial and you know things of that nature. Mark Furman, he should be an expert. You know, I mean, he was there during. OJ. Good or bad, we don't know. Hmm. Um, but let me put it over to the Fox Nation and share this with you. Okay. And um, I feel like I need to tell you guys something, but I guess not. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and play this. If you guys don't mind just taking a second, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all the fun things we ask you to do. And I'm going to play this. It's like 25 minutes long, so it's not too terribly long. And thank you guys all for being here. Excuse me. Four University of Idaho students were found dead Sunday in a house near campus in what officials have called a crime of passion. These were four innocent kids that did nothing to anybody, killed with a buoy knife in the middle of the night. A college town in mourning as police search for the killer of four University of Idaho students. The level of outrage out there is so extreme. I mean, you just feel it in the air. The, the case is everywhere. After an intense manhunt, a month and a half later, Koberger was arrested across the country at his parents' home in Pennsylvania. This guy's obsessed with killing. He's obsessed with committing crimes and getting away with it. He was wearing surgical gloves when they arrested him at like 1.30 in the morning. It's a planned murder. It, this just wasn't off the cuff. Why this house? Why these girls? Brian Koberger will go on trial in October for the murders of four University of Idaho students. If convicted, he could face life in prison to the death penalty. You got overwhelming evidence with this guy. Can they offer him a plea deal? It seems odd to me that this was his first killing and he could bargain off of that. Well, who's jumped on board Team USA? Is there a surprise witness? This person um, went in there that night uh, with the intent to kill and showed no mercy, unprovoked, and uh, killed our daughter, her best friend, and their two friends. We are glad that we live in the state of Idaho with the death penalty. Today we're talking about the Moscow murders. With me are three guests with a lot of experience. Chris Swecker, retired assistant FBI director and also a practicing attorney in Charlotte.
Charlotte, North Carolina. We have Paul Morrow, a retired inspector with NYPD, and Lenny DePaul, retired United States Marshal. Let's not waste any time. Best piece of evidence that you've heard so far and the most convincing that we have the right suspect. Got to be the knife sheath. I mean, that thing speaks volumes. Picking DNA off of that thing and, and then swabbing uh, Kohlberger. I'd agree. I think that's what it has to be, especially in this day and age when juries expect uh, forensic slam dunks. They want to see that kind of technical information in a case. I would agree with you both, but the interesting part about all this is they didn't need the knife sheath. The car, to me, is the pivotal point because they were narrowing down the white Elantra. A possible break in the case of the four slain University of Idaho students. Authorities are asking for the public's help in identifying the owner of a white Hyundai Elantra seen near the home at the time of the quadruple murder. Remember what they said? Mm -hmm. There's 37,000 white Elantras in the state of Washington and Idaho. Well, they did that to kind of throw it out there that they really didn't know anything. They went to Washington State University and University of Idaho and go, first thing we're going to do is all white Elantras that belong to anybody, and then in those two counties. So they narrowed that down to dozens, second day that they had a, a make and model. A big break came November 29th. An officer with the Washington State University Police cross-referenced white Elantras on campus and found one registered to Brian Koberger. The two unsung heroes, in, in my mind, are the two university cops over in the University of Washington who, independent of each other, discovered the relevant white Elantra, and ultimately that was the big data point that began to open the door. In conjunction with the Pennsylvania State Police, Federal Bureau of Investigation, detectives arrested 28-year-old Brian Christopher Kohlberger in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, on a warrant for murder of Ethan, Zena, Madison, and Kaylee. It's getting to the point now where the defense attorney is starting to make motions and actually start play out. What did you guys think of about the proposed alibi? Weak, obviously. The defense just says, oh, yeah, the alibi is he drives around at night in the car. He likes to do that, period. I was just thinking of myself being the detective in charge, and this was my case. I just go, yes, you just put him in the car. They knew that he was probably on a camera leaving the parking lot at a certain time and coming back. There's no way they could say he wasn't in the car, so now it becomes an alibi. If you have to give notice to the prosecution as the defense that you're going to present an alibi defense, why? So that they can corroborate it with witnesses that you're going to have in court. If that is all you're presenting, it's not a real alibi. And if you don't come up with a real alibi, then you're not going to be able to present an alibi defense in this case. I think uh, we'd all agree that you need somebody to testify to the alibi, and Koberger is certainly not going to take the stand. It's a sign of desperation. He's all unlikely to come up with anybody who corroborate that he was doing this. You'd have to argue not only that somebody else was in the car, but whoever this other person was had his phone because the two of them parallel each other when they actually did the forensic dumps. Who's this mysterious person in his car with his phone driving around in the middle of the night? And that same person, by the way, was there 12 times before at King's Road leading up to the homicide. Police say Koberger's phone had been pinged near the crime scene at least a dozen times prior to the murders, all but once in the late night or early morning hours. I hear about pinging and I understand triangulation, but it's kind of an advanced forensic tool. So tell us how it works. Cellular intercepts are unique, especially to in my world when you're chasing human beings. As you move, it's going to go from tower to tower to tower. You'll get direct triangulation. There are devices, equipment out there uh, that I'd rather not talk about, but you could pretty much put that phone uh, in somebody's bathroom, even though you're sitting in the middle of Manhattan and there's seven towers around you. You're actually intercepting that signal going to the tower. Yeah. He turns his phone off right before the homicides. He turns it back on afterwards. I, I shut my phone off for two hours. I mean, that's just classic. But it's telling us a lot more. In retrospect, it's interesting where that thing wakes up and goes to bed every night. Is it's it going up and down at at 2:45 to well, that's 5:05 every that? night? 
you want to see the pattern. You want to yes. see who he's talking to. Who's his five favorite people that he calls all the time? Now you're going to look at those five phones. Uh, so you're talking hours. about human nature in, in the way they use a device. Absolutely. You know, as a former prosecutor, you're always thinking, what, what's the defense going to be? Defense is on a fishing expedition. Yeah, I think the defense is going to attack the, the strength of the prosecution case, which is the DNA, it's the cell phone tracking, it's um, the collection of the evidence. So if the DNA goes, it doesn't eliminate the Elantra and it doesn't eliminate the cell tower. If you eliminate the cell tower and you eliminate the white Elantra, it doesn't eliminate the DNA. Right. So to me, the defense attorney is in a rock and a hard place and she's just shooting in all directions, hoping she hits something. She's just doing that, throwing sand into the gears to try to slow this thing down as much as possible. She's looking for a weakness someplace, as Chris said. I, I think there's going to be a pretty robust defense and, it, and it's going to all be designed. Just get one juror. When you're sitting in a jury box and you've got a defense attorney introducing all these different variables, th things can get dicey in terms of how a jury processes all that information. Well, it so, also comes down to who's testifying, too. The revelation that a roommate of the victims actually saw the alleged killer having opened her bedroom door because she heard crying and a male voice saying, it's okay, I'm going to help you. That roommate told police she saw a man who was dressed entirely in black walking towards her. She hurriedly shut and locked her bedroom door. The man left the building. Police say that man was Brian Koberger. She already described the one thing that wasn't solicited by a detective. He wasn't really athletic, but he was slim, slightly muscular with bushy eyebrows. Well, when she said that, I, I said, he's got a ski mask on because all she's seeing is this much. And she doesn't describe his hair, which is pretty distinctive. Race, she didn't give race. Everybody says she opened the door. And I, I say, I hesitate. I don't think she opened it either. Imagine that. She's not opening the door. He just killed two people upstairs. He would not hesitate killing her. I have a feeling she cracked the door enough to see him walk down the stairs. And then Zana made some overture, some exclamation, and he went to her. She shuts the door. The strangest thing is that after um, she met Kohlberger in the hallway, she did not call the police for seven hours. That's probably the biggest hole right there. You know, that's going to be a dangling piece of information that jurors are going to chew on. And, and it, it doesn't mean anything. We, we can all piece together why that probably happened. But jurors hang on to little things sometimes. And, and defense attorneys can amplify little things in front of a jury. It's not even clear that she called the police. The first call was apparently to friends. Friends came over and then they used her phone apparently to call the police. So her role in it is not that clear. So... How is that going to play off for the defense? If they attack her, they could turn the entire jury against them in 30 seconds. So what do they do? Ask nothing? I think the strategy would be to just elicit the facts. The other thing with her testimony that's just a little bit mysterious um, is that by definition here, Brian Koberger didn't have the knife sheath. That k bar knife is a big knife. That's just short of a sword. So she sees him in the hallway leaving after at least two, maybe four murders. And she sees this person. She gets the bushy eyebrows. So she doesn't see him holding this knife. You would think that'd be the first thing she would see. But you don't want to attack her because it makes you unsympathetic. And when it gets to summation, the defense is going to create a timeline that's counted to the prosecution's timeline. At that point, she's not on the stand. And you can elicit uh, all of these <clears throat> contradictions at that point. Well, he could have been hiding the knife. Who knows? Sure. I mean, we don't even mind. know that he she knows him. she saw him. Right. He was probably listening to his own heartbeat at that point. It was probably pounding out of his chest. He mm -hmm. just had a hell of a fight, and he right. didn't expect it. FBI personnel returned to the house where four University of Idaho students were murdered last year. The Bureau says agents are at the house to construct visual and audio exhibits and a physical model of the home. I was told that they've got a lot more evidence from the scene on Colbert. So if somebody leaves their knife sheath, I, I would find it hard to believe that they don't have fibers, uh, hairs, an eyebrow, saliva. 
Um, we know Xana fought, and almost by definition, that means there's going to be skin scrapings, right? Well, I think the evidence was fairly well preserved at the scene, and we don't know 90%. The search warrants are just enough to get them probable cause and let right. them search vehicles, residences, right. computers, and then they pull everything else back and go, we're not going to show our hand. And, and you could argue, just to play devil's advocate, that they were too gentle about that. If you look at a Koberger, you say, okay, we got the white Elantra, he fits the description. When we look into his background here at the University of Washington, he's about to be fired and subsequently was mm -hmm. because he's having trouble with women, um, et cetera. He fits a lot of the profile. Grab his garbage, there's no expectation of privacy, you don't even need a warrant. I think they were minimalist because the more they gave, the more the defense and the defendant would know. Right. And that's something to protect. What don't we know? Has a knife been recovered? Clothing. There was multiple places he could have disposed of it in water and land. He was quite active after the murder. I think that they were very, very cautious about how far they went. And then ultimately what happened is I think it worked against them a little bit because he blows town and he takes that mobile crime scene with him. Nobody travels 2,300 miles to go visit your parents at Christmas mm -hmm. and then drive 2,300 miles back. Desperate people do desperate things. When that news started tightening, human instincts turned into animal instincts. He changes the license plate, drives across country. He wants to get so the car out of it. It makes you question whether the dad was, was, was complicit. The father's phone, they've done a search warrant on it, I'll guarantee it. Because I would have done it. I would have got phone records from the father's house. Yeah, see if they're talking to each records. other beforehand. You want to see if they're texting with each other. Oh, absolutely. I don't think the father was complicit. I think he was Mr. Clueless in the video. He might have gone out there because he knows he's got this troubled son. And right. So we don't know what triggered that trip. Right. That car was never going to come back. He was going right. to sell it, destroy it, hide it, store it. He you know. clearly had a. I find it really rich. I find it real rich that Kohlberger's dad had enough money to fly across the country for a Christmas trip and bring him back for a Christmas vacation. And they have not been to one trial hearing, not one hearing, not one. So why not? Not even when he, you know, gave his no um i'm just gonna stand here and be quiet deal he must have told them beforehand i'm just gonna say there and tell i'm gonna tell him i'm not gonna say nothing so you guys don't have to come out i don't know but it's just very weird to me that he can come out there for that one trip and then he doesn't come out for any other this is the time to come out bud a game plan or he was definitely taking steps this is game track. time forget christmas vacation we I'm don't in jail, know dad what they got out of the car but i would be shocked if they didn't get a little bit of blood of one of the victims mm -hmm. in that car that was on yeah, his feet, luminal or something that, yeah. something yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. on his gloves mm -hmm. on the knife he had to put the knife down on the seat this is really a battle over dna evidence they want to know how investigators narrowed the dna search down to one suspect but the defense attorney made a statement that <laughs> the contact dna was placed at the scene. The defense attorneys here are gonna attack the process and, and the most vulnerable part of, of any kind of forensic evidence is the collection. So when the defense attorney says the detectives or the officers or a lab tech planted the evidence, she's saying that they planted evidence that's invisible. And where would you get it? You don't know who the suspect is for at least two or three weeks, if not six weeks. It could have been uh, cross-contamination, if you will, where they've already, somebody's handled something that did have his DNA from the car. And I don't know what the sequence of the collection was, but you could argue as a defense attorney that they came into contact, whoever collected it, and then transferred it over. So you're talking about everything, everybody at the crime scene does their job, goes to the lab, you have 
this evidence taken from the car, this evidence taken from the scene, this person analyzes this evidence and this evidence and cross-contaminates the two. And there's no indication that he's ever been in the house before. So if you were going to try to claim some far-flung cross-contamination thing, you say, well, he's been in a house, he's been in the kitchen, maybe it was picked up there, et cetera. There's been no indication that he knew any of these people in that way, that he was in that house. So if they're going to try to make that claim, that they're going to say the police are in an enormous conspiracy here with the FBI, Idaho State Police, Moscow local cops, other cops in Idaho who assisted in processing the scene. This is a conspiracy on the level of the Warren Commission. They actually said the defense attorney is inching up on the OJ defense. So I appreciate what she's trying to do because I totally agree with her. The client's totally guilty. So we have to do something other than attack the evidence, right. which we're not going to be able to sufficiently do. And so nobody ever accuses <laughs> anybody of planting evidence. I just want everybody to know. <laughs> what, what's, what's Forensics experts talking to Fox say that investigators will likely gain a whole lot more DNA evidence from this scene. Listen here. And it's not just blood. We're talking about any kind of touch DNA, like dead uh, skin cells that are that are sloughing off. Uh, you also have hair transfer, fiber transfer. All of these things are going through. And here's here's key. If he has blood on him, he's going to contact the surfaces that he's walking on and touching. Powerful evidence. Everything in this case is pivoting around this knife shape. What does she say about contact DNA? Yeah, my understanding is the touch DNA is one of the problems is the, the amount of material that you're working with. And I think what they'll try to do is draw a distinction between touch DNA and something serological, right? It's like blood, for instance, where just by definition, your blood's there. It, it wasn't transferred unless somebody somehow or other got a hold of your uh, sample of your blood, which is a lot more far-fetched. I think it's going to be dueling experts, if you will. When you get two different experts in there saying different things that favor their client, they're going to confuse the jury and they're going to cancel it out. Touch DNA. Oh, well, somebody took it and touched his DNA. And it, but I don't know nothing about DNA and it, it makes sense to me. So, yeah, I think that, that could be an issue. They're going to have to argue somehow or other that either it was somehow inadvertently transferred to this knife it was for sale in the local Walmart. Koberger picked it up, thought it was interesting, put it back. Later it was used for the homicide. It stayed on the knife, something insane like that. Okay, so I'm at the scene and I'm the detective in charge. And I said, okay, there's a knife sheath here. This is the first thing we need to recover before we do anything, because it's obviously left by the suspect because I don't believe the victims own a cable. They collect it. They take touch DNA off. That is collected and put on a slide. It's put into a machine and it comes out with the profile. There's no match. There's no match. So Brian Kohlberg isn't arrested because of the DNA on the knife sheet. He's arrested because that DNA profile actually matches a family tree of somebody that went into GEDmatch and agreed to let law enforcement use it. Now the defense is arguing that is illegal. You can't have it both ways. You can't argue that the genetic genealogy violates his rights. Well, again, you're trying to confuse the jury. Now you have to get into a deep explanation about how they used forensic genetic genealogy. That's when people's civil liber liberties inclination might kick in. I think the end game here for the defense relative to the genetic genealogy is to make some kind of fruit of the poisonous tree argument. They're going to yeah. say, look, that's what pointed you at my guy. And as a result, everything that came after that should not be allowed into the case. If it wasn't for genetic genealogy, my client would have never been arrested. Well, my client's car would have never been searched. Is it going to work? No. But it does get very legalistic. Even if law enforcement was not allowed to run the check that they did from one of the genealogy databases, it didn't hit Brian Kohlberger reportedly it hit his father. So you have a civil case potentially involving the father. One of, one of the things that every defense attorney is trying to do is create appealable issues right. during the trial. And this can be an appealable issue because it's never been heard before. General public never knew about this until this case right here. What's a number though that will work for the prosecution here? Ultimately, when they get they this about it. at the arrest. Okay. okay. They use this in old cold cases. Who was the dude? Um, 
I cannot think of his name right now. I don't know why I can't think of his name. Over in California. What's that bridge called? They called him like some sort of, he was like a notorious serial killer. They just caught him after like 20, 30 years. Golden State. Thank you, Therese. Golden State killer. They used this exact, I'm gonna, let me put my picture up here because I need to be like, I want everyone to hear me out this one. It's okay for them to get the Golden State killer off the off the streets. I feel like, how long was he killing? Like 30 years and he stopped, but he went dormant, but still 30 years or something. But we cannot dare touch that science for Brian Kohlberger. Don't you dare. Don't you dare use that same science that you used to convict a serial killer, convict him. You know, I mean, if you, if it's not, was it not good for the goose and not good for the gander? I just don't get that. It we literally, we didn't even think about it. When that news news flashed on our TV, Golden State, Golden State Killer finally apprehended, used IgG information to go back and get his DNA. No, everyone probably just turned the channel. It was like, oh, that's cool. They did that. They got him. That's cool. But when it comes to Brian Kohlberger, that's believed that. It comes back as 5.37 octillion to one. That's 27 zeros. That's more than all of the grains of sand on planet Earth. That's how likely it is that, that it's his DNA that's on that sheaf. You're sitting in a jury box and you've had some doubts. Ooh, big, big number. It's got to be him. All right now, the 28-year-old suspect in the murders of the four Idaho college students waived extradition today in Pennsylvania and will be brought right to Moscow, Idaho to face charges. Everybody waives their right to a speedy trial because they want <laughs> the time of the murder and the outrage and the press to be as far away from the trial and they want a terrorist attack, an invasion of another country. They want something that happens in between. Does anybody see it as a surprise that Koberger waived his right to a speedy trial? Not a bit. They want as much time to pass. They want memories to fade. They want people to get distracted with other stuff. And Witnesses to forget. Anybody think they're gonna cut a deal on this? I see three reasons why it could possibly happen. First of all, you never know what a jury's going to do. Number two, you have to put the family through all of that stuff again. Now, in this case, the families reportedly do want the death penalty. The third reason might be the most compelling, which is that families in cases like this, if this goes to trial and he's convicted, we're never going to get the why. And so sometimes the only way you're going to get the why is if somebody cuts the deal for their lives, they have to allocute on the record as to absolutely everything. If they fudge it, deals off. And that might be the only way we ever get the entire story of Brian Colbert. Here, here's a wild card. And it's a really, really out in left field. But I think it seems odd to me this was his first killing. You're, you open up with your criminal killing career with four yeah. victims. And, there, you know, there's a remote chance that there's another one out there. And he could bargain off of that. It's been done before. Paul, do you think that he could get a fair trial in Moscow? Very, very tough question. I don't know because the level of outrage out there is so extreme. And realistically, for this trial, you practically have to hold it on the moon for people not to have had some sort of preconceptions. I just think that a change of venue will serve no purpose. I think the outrage is nationwide. If I had to predict, it's getting tried in Moscow people they may not realize, but the autopsy photos of these four young people is going to be shown on a big screen in extreme clarity and in color. And the jury will be done after that. Jurors cry. And they start looking at the defendant. Yeah. This is going to be very graphic. They have to show the crime scene and they have to show all the blood. And, you know, the description that I have heard from some people that were at the scene was it was horrendous a slaughterhouse one of the things they're going to do is just elongate the trial as much as possible because you want as much time to pass as possible so that maybe the jurors grow some calluses relative to that and then potentially on summation is where you want to throw all of that doubt at the jury i think a lot of people would say okay yeah i'll look at the evidence now you got to convince me he didn't do it well the evidence that's come out despite the fact that it's only the tip of the iceberg, is very compelling. Do you think Koberger will be found guilty? No doubt in my mind.
Mine either. I think he will be, but I think this could be a battle to get there. If they're saving their butt. <laughs> there with that one. But yeah, that was from Cornell Law. So not Google, um, but I gave you another definition of it too. I thought there was something else um, I was going to pull up. I know there was. No, I don't have it up here anymore. So never mind. Um, so Zone 7, which is Sheriff McCollum, she did an ep a couple episodes over the over the two women that were found um, unal unalive. I don't think I've said that murdered. I don't think I've said that to this far in the stream at this point. Um, but they were found murdered, uh, Julian Kelly and Veronica Butler. They did um, a podcast over them. I just saw that. And that might be good to go over. I wanted to go back over that case covered anyway. Um, because they the suspects did go to court. Now, um, the family members, you know, had to be held back and stuff from the people at court. I guess it was pretty, pretty crazy. But um, wasn't really enough to go do a whole live over yet. So I was just waiting. <laughs> Tell us the truth. Oh, no. No, huh? I'm serious. No, I'm not mad. Uh-uh. I didn't know what you said. You're cool. <laughs> if I ever say anything to someone and you guys think, are she talking to me? I'm probably not. Because, you know, um, somebody thought I said something to them. Like, I lashed out at them, and I, I don't think I did. Really? Updated documents came out for that case? Oh. I have to get my hands on them. Wow, that's fast. I thought that there's someone had seen like a little bit of something in there. Um, maybe we'll cover that tomorrow because I thought today was Friday, guys. I'm I'm all mixed up, and I want to go back over Sebastian's case. There are any new updates? There's not, but we haven't. We have the interview with his mom that we've never been over on our channel over here. Um, and then the last one that Seth did, we we don't we didn't really deep in go into the Seth um, interviews because I don't. Um, I don't like the way anybody's handled it personally, <laughs> the situation. I don't think any creators handled the situation very well. So I don't like to, I'm just not, I don't want to do that. You know, I did it. We did it like one, one night we played for like, you know, through the white. And after that, like, I don't know, I was just, I felt some type of way. I was like, I don't know. We shouldn't be like throwing all this shade onto one side and not throwing any shade to the other side. I don't know. I just, that's what I do now. Lord, Lord Mama, uh-oh. You would believe it. Do you even lash out? I don't see you as a lash out. <laughs> I'm not. Prior to September, or after September, I've been pretty cool, calm, collected. Thank you. All those creators are huge grifters. Oh my gosh, they are. Mystic, I can't take it. I had to tell my counselor today. <laughs> this was like, go in there. Oh, your counselor or some of that stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't talk to anybody on the app. I really don't. Like, I don't talk to other creators. I may talk to, like, Shay Binet once every full moon. You know what I mean? Not very often. Um, so Vincent has to hear it. <laughs> and when I get, like, you know, you'll see things. Just as a creator, you'll see things. They'll rub you the wrong way. Because you'll you'll know. You'll know. And you don't want to say nothing because if you bring it out, you get lashed out at. So you have to like stay poised and calm and quiet. One of these days, you all want to, I'm, gonna, I'm like a pressure cooker. <laughs> it's going to be one of these days. I'm going to say, go to the, go to the unfiltered page. You're going to see me just put that big bowl down. <laughs> I really think I do, Mary Beth. I really try to, so I, I really didn't mean to do anything. But I don't know. I just feel bad. I, if I did, I didn't mean to. Because I can see me maybe like snapping if I was like, you know, I don't like we have bad days, you know, but I mean, I don't ever think I bring it to the platform. I try not to. I really try, I, you know, and that's what I said um, to my counselor today. I said, there's never been a time I've I've ever came on my channel and been like, Damn, this eye is 
It's been so dry today. I just hate it. I just hate it. It's just stupid. I just hate it. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to make it worse. <laughs> I told her even, I was like, I've never really had that problem. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't come out here and like, and just like, um, tell you like stuff like that. I mean, even if it was bothering me, I would just put some eye drops in and suck it up. But you know. <laughs> like one of these days you're going to blow a gasket and blow up like you did that one night for 25 minutes. <laughs> Probably, probably. No, it's just um. Someone just they wrote me, they emailed, and it was it was just construct constructive criticism, I guess. But it was kind of mean at the same time. Um, they didn't like my mouth, so that really got me in my feelings. They said my mouth was bad, and that that got that that hurt my feelings. So, but I mean that's fine. I really, really do try to respect and. Be mindful of what I say on here. But I guess it's the it's the words I used. Do you want to know the words? Do you want to know them? I'll say them. They're bad. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to hear the words I said? Nope. It was someone in the chat. The words I said that were so vulgar and so bad was shit. No, that wasn't in, no, no, shit wasn't in there. Sorry. Sorry. That wasn't in there. Took, take that back. I said that twice. Uh-oh. Um, they're not even that bad. Damn. Hell. And crap. Damn. Hell. And crap. Uh, let that sink in. Let it sink in. Damn. Hell. And crap. And good thing I have it in the email because I would never believe myself. It was it's one of her. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I got a, a whole email today just like saying everything I do wrong. I I mispronounce people's names wrong. Like Ruby Frank. Frankie. Frank. So I, I was mad about that. I was just, you know. I'm like, you can give me constructive criticism. I want that. I want that. Like, I talk too much to my chat in the beginning. I, I know that. I mean, that's constructive criticism. But like picking on somebody is like not. And to do a live is hard. To do a live every night, it's pretty hard. It's not hard, you know, but it is, you know. <laughs> Reply, like, Jesus loves you. I had to leave for a minute and then come and sit back down. I got like heated. I was because I, I really, then I cried and I, I don't ever cry, but it like really hurt my feelings. Cause I'm like, I really do take mind in what I say, because there's a, there's a thing. And Vince, I made Vincent laugh. There is a, there's a customer service voice. Everybody has one. It's called your respect voice, you know? And then you got me. This is me normally. If you want me normally, this is how I talk all day, every day, Monday through Friday, 365 days a week, or, you know, days a year, 52 weeks of the year. This is how I normally talk. I don't usually have very much inflection in my voice, but this is how I talk. And if you want to be real, I usually use the bad words a lot, a lot more than I'd like to admit. I come from a potty mouth family. If you would just hear my family talk. <laughs> but I, you know, I just, I felt bad. Because like, I don't want someone to think that I'm disrespectful like that. Because I'm not. But we're going to have cases where we're passionate, right? And I do get passionate. And I'll try not to lash out so much. But I can't help it. Like when we see this, we cover the stories that we carry. So I'll try to reel it in. <laughs> now my grandmother could teach you how to cuss like a sailor. That's who taught me. My grandmother, Alicia, my grandmother. She says, sip seven and sevens, watching game show network, cussing us all out. None of us were immune. <laughs> Just kidding. She never cussed the grandkids out. But I, I kind of, Dan says, I come from a long line of, of potty mouths. Me too. And like, it just, I mean, it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate anybody more than some, you know what I mean? I don't think I'm better than anyone because I don't like cuss on here because I don't. But um, I just, I really do try to like my, be mindful of my voice and what I say. I mean, you know, people watch my show. Now there are days I want to say some stuff. 
but I try not to, you know, I try to keep it pretty good. And I mean, there are times I do, you know, well, I, I normally do, but I just, I try to, um, I try to keep it as good as I can. Guys, I'm over here. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I am trying. I just, I felt really bad because I just, I was like, someone wants to leave because of me saying crap. Damn in hell. Days of our lives, Phantom. I felt like it. My mom used to watch that. I think actually that's who I was named after someone off Days of Our Lives. I think it was. Thanks, Wiz. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just continue to still be at me. You know? I am. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mystic. I really try. And I told Vince, I said, where are they going to go? I said, where they're not going to hear a cuss word or two. Or, you know? Like... I tried to look someone up for them. I even went above and beyond. I said, let me get on YouTube. I typed in Christian, Christian YouTube, uh, Christian you, tr true crime creator. I forget who came up. It was someone that was funny. It was like, not, not that. Let's see. There it is. Christian true crime. I'm going to be having this on my for you page now. We've got the misery machine. Never heard of them, but maybe. Southern Girl Crime Stories. There we go. She's never live, but we got to do live. Hold on. Live. I would love to know. Let's see this one. I'm going to guess that this woman is, she's, I'm going to guess that she kind of cusses. Let me show you. I mean, I don't know. She looks like she could be like, Pretty cool. She looks like she'd cuss though, you know. Just trying to find her somebody. Maybe this person if they don't go live. Maybe she does. No. Nope. I think she's telling a story. There's Annie Elise. Yeah. Kendall, she she cusses. So I don't know. I'll keep looking. Oh, I thought I was on the, the screen. I'll keep looking. <laughs> no, that's how I am too. I really, and I, re I, ch I really like, I just, it, you know, it's just a, there's going to be that one person that watches you and you're going to, you know, wish that you didn't say something, but you want to know, <laughs> oh, no, <damn> it. <laughs> do you want to hear, I was going to put the 10 commandments beside me today because, <laughs> you know, pot calling the kettle black, you know, I don't know, but I will say, Oh, thanks, Curious Kit. She said, I think you have a great balance. There is no perfect, but you're my favorite because, oh, I didn't see the rest. That was cute. Because you do, um, because you, we, 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 because we love you. And I love you guys too. That is, that's exactly, that's exactly it. And I just hate for someone to like, I'm one of those people. I don't like people to think I'm like mean or bad or anything. I'm, I'm, more, I'm a people pleaser. That's my problem. Okay. That's, I figured it out today. And I'm not, and I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Um, There are certain things that you have to throw out the window or you have to lack in order to get through on or get big on YouTube. I figured it out in true crime. You literally have to take your morals and throw them out the window. And you literally can have no empathy for anybody. I mean, Simon Quentin, Quentin Simon, sorry. There's an example right there. Nobody's, nobody streamed his trial yet. No one's talked about him since, you know, his mom has been back in court other than me and Alex Erickson. We weren't there on the front porch. We weren't making thousands of dollars. Um, it's just, it's like, what is going on? Yeah, lady, but I, that's how I am. And I, that's why I'm like, if the F-bomb comes out of my mouth, usually everyone knows. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay. <laughs> Tony's upset. But no, like I really, I just, uh, I don't know. I try to keep it pretty well, pretty good. I mean, I don't, I cuss. I do. I cuss all the time. I, Vincent probably cusses more because I cuss. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I rub off on him. I'm bad. I'm so bad. Uh, hold on one second. Let me put this in chat. I'll just put that in the chat. My candle smells stronger the more you burn it. Aw, 
And she says, it smells amazing. Get the candles. Thank me. You'll thank me later. Your home will too, because it smells so good. Thanks, Mary Beth. That's so nice. Thank you. Oh yeah. I'll put the boutique link in there. That's very sweet. I do love the candles too. I actually have a, one of the smaller ones out in my living room right now. I need to um, top it off. Like, you know, I have a candle warmer. Thank you. <laughs> so when Lord Mama came in tonight, that's what, <laughs> that's what said it all. Oh Lord Mama. Because I was like, oh Lord Mama. <laughs> oh man. Who is big and true crime? Reported the court for Lyle. Oh, she did? Oh, good. I didn't see her do that. That's awesome. I didn't see crime lines and lines do that. Or I would have told or said Brooks, you know, of course. Oh, I didn't see her. I didn't even think I didn't even think about Brooks. Um doing it or not doing it because she's always doing doing something <laughs> i always feel like she's doing a different case it's not like she runs on that same case like she's kind of like me in a way like we both cover different cases i never really thought about that before she's like the day version of me i'm like the night version of her i don't know why i didn't think about that before today because <laughs> we really do we do like cases that are mainstream and then but we'll cover cases here and there we'll cover cases that are like you know, not very heard of yet, or they're, you know, haven't been trending yet, or maybe they're older. So with, is it with the Sebastian stuff? I think everyone's overdoing with the Sebastian stuff. That's why I haven't brought anything to the channel. I want to, I want to talk to you guys about stuff, but I'm like, damn, I saw a creator. She streamed it 44 days straight and she's, or, um, she's deleted some of her lives. So 44 days. He hasn't been missing that long. What? <laughs> He's probably been missing 44 days. Like, it's crazy to me. Who is it? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I thought you meant me. You said keep grinding up, but that's that person in chat. I thought you meant, like, keep grinding up. I always wanted a song. <laughs> like, DM, I'll buy, I'll buy you one when I get there, girl. <laughs> That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> That's funny. You were talking about, you were talking to keep grinding up. I was going to say, I mean, I will. I'll buy you a sob if that's what you want. <laughs> Lord Mama. Now I'm going to love that. Every time Lord Mama comes out, <laughs> you get the biggest welcome. Lord Mama. My dogs are out. My dog's out there. Oh, it's the other dog. I forgot she was in here still. And she's like, I got upset. Like my voice doesn't really get upset, but you know me, I inflect, I'm inflected and she's still cool. She usually shakes. Like if, if my voice gets higher, she'll like, and I'm like, oh my God, I feel so bad. Yes. I said, I, I thought I emailed you back, Cat's Life, the picture of the cat on your head. It was cute. My cat eat, was eating my hair this morning. It was pretty funny. But I think I'm going to jump off here. I love just talking to you guys, though. Yeah. Was there, like, I have to go back and look. See, I don't really, I never look. But I did have to leave chat the other day. That was because somebody sent a super sticker that's a creator that begs for money. And they sent her a super sticker and they said, we do it because we care when I know that person does not care for a fact. Not saying Brooks doesn't. I'm saying this other person doesn't. And it got me so hot and bothered. I announced my damn departure like an airport. I have never <laughs> announced my departure before. Usually I just depart. But I was like, you know, I, I keep my mouth shut a lot. I really do. I wish I could say all the stuff I want to say all the time. But I'm, I usually try to keep it, you know, in. But I'm not. I'm not going to be able to do it much longer, you know. And I'm just going to take it over a second channel like everyone else does in true crime. You know, they just grab a second channel. I haven't watched Young Turkey in a while, Mary Beth. I haven't watched them. I'll have to go back over them and see how they've been doing. I haven't, I haven't been over there a long time. I didn't even know they still did it. <laughs> Mystic. <laughs> I was really upset when I saw that. I was like, what did I see? And of course, Vincent's here now. So I'm not yelling at like myself or someone here to hear me. And he's like, so today he's like, man, you, 
you got a lot to say, don't you? And I'm like, I've got so much to say. Detective John won't like that. No, he won't be out. He won't be out for a while, Matt. Um, something bad kind of happened to his family. So he's, I don't know if he'll ever come back. It's kind of like those. There's so much I wanted to, I want to say, but I can't now because of the fact he, his son passed. And and that's why, I mean, I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to give him any more credence. You know what I mean? Like there's a ton of stuff that I'd like to say about what he did on the platform, but that kind of stops me when he lost his son, but not the same son that used to help him with his lives. Not his, not Tanner. I think that was his name. Tanner. It's his older, his older son, his or his older, yeah, his older kid. So, um, that's why he's been off the platform too. So I'm like, mm, yeah. Detective John, I forget who wrote me and told me. And I, I kept it in for a long time. But um, yeah, I, I heard that his son was um, not in a really good place and stuff. So, and he sort of came to, you know, his disease. So I just, I mean, I feel really bad for him. I mean, even if he were to cuss me out once over, you know what I mean? Like I still feel bad because you don't want to lose a kid but it's been a couple months since he's been on the platform i hope he's doing okay i hope he's not spiraling or anything you know i, I couldn't imagine couldn't imagine having to, you know uh, a child die i couldn't imagine that and that's why i think that that's where my empathy comes from is i lost my parents maybe at such a young age and i just i don't know i feel for people i really do and that's what's um, it's going to either like help me in true crime or it's, I'm going to completely just tank. And I hope I'm, I hope I'm the one <laughs> that's, you know, still standing because, you know, it really is. It's crazy. Yes. Let me see. Um, I'm going to see if I, 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 oops, my finger got trigger happy. Let me see if I have, I don't, do I not have Otto's email? Wait, no, that's, I'm going to have to look it up. I don't think I have Otto's email. That's so weird. Otto's never emailed me before. Aries, are you in here? Aries said he'd be in and out. Don't make me go find him right now. <laughs> my little fingers, like my fingers are going. <sighs> it's giving me heartburn. I thought so. I don't, yeah, I don't have an email though. I'll have to look more thoroughly. Google. It must have been like maybe Otto's real name. Like, because you put Otto in my search bar and everything comes up. We got Wayfair, Amazon, QVC. I don't even shop QVC. <laughs> Joanne Fabrics, Target. I don't have an Otto. Like, Creative Co op. No. Auto. Oh, that's auto, auto, auto men. <laughs> I thought it was just auto. I was like, what the heck? I'll have to look. Because I know. I know that. Um, is this it? Oh, I got it. Okay. I found it. Okay. I'll email. I'll, I'll make sure of that email. I found it. <laughs> Yeah, so I wonder um, if it's because of her headache. I hope not. I hope it went away because her migraine was going on weeks, guys. I just thought of that the other day. Like, it's been a couple weeks. So I hope that she's okay. I'll make sure I email her. Yeah, they all kind of do. Not me. Misty Firefly, you, do you have a do you have a channel? I didn't know you had a channel. Do you have a channel? I was like, do we do we have a creator in our chat that we didn't even know about? Yeah, I really, man. <laughs> Mystic. Oh my god, I bet. So 
do you ever have somebody like in your family? It's usually family, you know, and they have that face that you just, you don't want to go near. Like everyone's got one. You either got like an aunt, an uncle, maybe it's your mom or dad. You just look at them and you want to run away the other way. That's what, I, that's how I feel about her. <laughs> she just makes me want to run, run away, just run away. She reminds me of my aunt. She's that face of just like, I don't know. Like she's talking down on you or something. Oh, she'll feel back when she's feeling better. Oh, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to look. Oh, I didn't know that you did that. Harley Dilly's body. Man, that was a good case. Yeah, is your is your channel just Mystic Firefly? We want to know. You have to put out more con more content. Wow. I didn't know that. I would love to just see some coverage on that again. I mean, it's an interesting, very interesting case. I mean, how many years later was he found? Eight down a um fireplace? <laughs> what? He was very close to home. Very crazy. Yeah. Could be survived physical. Yeah. Um, Apple, even though I probably is, is a virtual reality sets. I probably shouldn't wear any virtual reality sets. Someone said that if you like have anxiety or something, don't do it. Yeah, it really, yeah, it really messed um, auto up. Well, there's a person on the platform that's went through a hundred mods and counting. I told my counselor today, I said, I got two. And when they leave me, I'll have one. That's Vincent. And he's a, he's a mod right now. So I got three, but he's my invisible mod. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Wow. That's pretty cool, though. I mean, you know. Oh, Phantom, he we know. We know when we're when he I when he says something, I know what he means usually. <laughs> Songs. Something that's related to like trending topics, like stuff like that. Yeah, crime and conspiracy sure is. Yeah, sure is. New Sebastian update, so, you know, they're not. It's just day 45. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm going to come in one night and um, go live. Like, no, seriously, like, and I'm not talking about anyone else. I'm just going to come in here and sit down, turn on my camera. Actually, I'm not even going to turn on my camera. I'm just going to come in here and sit down when it's time to go live. And then I'm going to come on live and I'm going to just not say anything. Until someone in the chat says something. I'm just going to sit up here like this. And say, what are we talking about tonight? I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys the, the shocking headliner. And then you guys tell me what to talk about. Oh, wow. He, of his other videos? Oh. We'll have to go check out your page, Mystic. No, <laughs> actually, you'd be a good, you'd be good mod. It's just crazy how people go through them, you know? I mean, I guess it, it's kind of easy if you, you know, if you're not choosy, I guess. I don't know. And then also, um, a lot of people don't like just throw, like French is thrown at them. They want to be asked, you know? But thank you guys all for being here. I think Vincent's awake. I actually texted him a while ago and asked if he was awake. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, it's Reddit. I was like, I thought it was somebody like emailing me. I was like, what? Um, <laughs> I text Vincent at 10.53 and I said, are you asleep? He didn't write me back. <laughs> Yeah, make more videos. Don't be afraid to do it. Come on live. Just come on live. If you do it your first time, you'll be fine after that. Look at me. I'm live every night. 
I don't remember the last time I took a day off. I think it was back in December, November. Um, and I told my, I told my counselor that today and she was like, what? I said, I know I probably should take a day off, but I can't help it. <laughs> well, I don't know where Sean Diddy Combs is, but I know where he's going and he's going to be, he's going to need all those Benjamins when he's there. But I still like that song. <laughs> if you need any help in Mystic, let me know. I'll help you. Try to help you guys as much as I can from a computer screen. But um, yeah, I mean, let's see. There's nothing really going on. I I don't know. I'm just looking. I'm just looking through. Uh, let's see who's live. Let's see if there's anything going on. No, nope, I don't see anything. Oh, well, you got Dolly streaming it again, too, Sebastian. They can't help themselves. You know, brings in money. If only one person's working. I, I couldn't, I couldn't work. I couldn't be do YouTube. Well, Mystic, you need to use your security to get some of these people out of this platform. <laughs> <laughs> you think he might be in the like in the attic rafters? I didn't even think about that. Do you think they probably would have checked there though, right? I think that you would think that. I mean, you would think they would have the cops would have already, you know, they they did say the house was fully checked, I think, three or four times, and they went and they did um like testing and stuff like that. And then her car was twice, checked twice, I think she said. Um, but yeah, I don't see it. There's there's nobody on live tonight. So I guess everyone's taking the night off. But I'm going to jump off here. I'll see you guys all tomorrow night. Um, if I do go live during the day, no promises. But, you know, um, if I do decide to go live during the day tomorrow, I will um, post, you know, on the community tab beforehand. So if we do like a members or if we go over on the other channel, I'll make sure I let you guys know because we might need a little vent and sesh. It's been a while. <laughs> but um, I hope you guys all have a really good night. And um, hopefully everybody can just like me, you know, just let everyone like me. Just kidding. I know there's going to be someone that don't like me. That's fine. I'll keep trying to get them to like me, though. It's just how I am. But thank you guys all for being here tonight. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. And so will Araya. She's laying here on the ground. And I bet Mia's right outside that door. So bye guys. See you tomorrow.